we attempted to explain the uh, meaning of the dharani because the dharani it was written in sanskrit there were chinese transliteration of the sound but uh, this meaning with the sanskrit words so last time we stopped at uh, tadyata tadyata means that is to say so in the previous lines uh, the previous lines cover the homage uh, to Avalokitesvara, from Tadyata onwards is the content of the of the of the mantra, the content of the Dharani. So Tadyata means that is to say, it's similar to the Ha Sutra. Um, most sutras contain uh, tadi, this word Tadyata, that is to say, or what is being said follows. Or that is Tadyata. Om Avaloki Lokate Karante. Om is the, the mother of all sound, the origins of all deeds. Um, it's, it's a very high level seat syllable. Om. Om, Ah, Hom, Vam, Tuam, Hire. All those are seat syllables. Very important syllables. Om. And some people translate it as, listen carefully. You can also listen carefully the following words. Om. Avaloki lokate. Avaloki, that means the watcher, the seer, the, the person, the bodhisattva who sees the world, who watches the world, who watches where the compassion is needed, where the mercifulness is needed, where the help should be rendered. Lokate. Lokate means the world transcending one. Or um, some people like to use the word Lord, the Lord who transcends the world, who practice to such a, a, a stage that transcends the world, the world transcending one. Karate means worship. Om Avaloki Lokate Karante E Hirahi. E Hirahi. It's like an exclamation. A is like an exclamation uh, addressing something. It's also a seat syllable. Here he. The H with the dot at the bottom um, is a thrown sound. English did not ha doesn't have a lot of thrown sound, but Sanskrit had a lot of thrown sounds. Like here he is in the throat. Uh, a number, number with an H that is a throat sound. So a hiri, it's an exclamation. Also is also a seat syllable. Um, you should know what, what seat means. As we have explained in, in Vishnana Matrata, in the consciousness school of, of the Buddhist teaching, um, the alaya consciousness contain all the seats. Our alaya consciousness contain all the seats. Seat does not mean the tree's seat. Seat is not, it's, it's metaphorical. The word seat is met metaphorical. It does not mean a seat of a plant, but it's metaphorically, it means a seat of a plant. It means, also means energy. The alaya consciousness contain a lot of these seats. Your, your alaya consciousness, my alaya consciousness, contain beginninglessness seeds, seeds that have been accumulated many, many lives before. All the energy, all the impressions, dispositions, all the activities that you have performed, all the thoughts, every word you utter, all accumulated from previous lives up to now. So everything you have to account, you have to be accountable for everything. Every word that you utter, every thought, it accumulates, it gets registered. If we use a metaphorical meaning, it's like a keyboard that has been keyed into the computer. All the bad things that you thought about, it won't, it won't go away. It, be it becomes a seat in your alaya consciousness. So that's why we practice to purify our mind, do not nurture any bad thought. Every thought has energy. If you nurture a selfish thought, a self-centered thought, 
it becomes an energy in your alaya consciousness. If you always nurture a uh, compassionate thought, a helpful thought, uh, a thought of a wholesome thought, then it becomes a, whos a wholesome seat. So you have to be very careful, all of us to be very careful in what we think, what we perform, and what we speak. But in ordinary daily life, all sentient beings are doing just the opposite thing. They don't care. Whatever they think about, they just voice it out. Cursing, yelling, flattery, lying, everything they want to utter out, they just blow it out. Yelling, they react with emotions. Every thought, a sensuous thought, a greedy thought, uh, inscrutable thought, uh, unscrupulous thought, unconscionable thought. All the thought. You think a thought does not count? Every thought counts. Every thought gets registered. So if you, if you follow the Buddhist teaching, you know that every thought is significant. Um, some people cannot sleep without, without creating imagination in, the, imagination in their mind. They were sleeping, they, couldn't, they, they suffered from insomnia, they want to create a story, an imagination in their mind. Now, if that created imagination is wholesome, that's good. If every night he's creating unwholesome thought, in order to fall asleep, some people are like that. It becomes tenaciously attached to the self-centered mind, the, the, the mono consciousness, and it gets stored into the alaya consciousness. It becomes very dangerous, it becomes very detrimental to you. So we all have to be very careful in our thought. You may think it's not, it doesn't count, nobody knows about it. It gets registered in you. Bad results will come out. How come, how come in our daily lives we encounter so many bad things, so many unsatisfactoriness, unhappy, emotional? How come we encounter all this, what you, quote and unquote, presume to be um, inequitable to you? It's unfair to you. Nothing is unfair to you. You create your own thought. You create your own destiny. You've got to be very careful and you've got to be accountable for every thought, every word, every action you perform. They all carry karma. They all carry the karmic energy. Every manifestation, every impression, every disposition, all counts. Um, so, a uh, Next, Maha Bodhisattva. A hirahi. Maha Bodhisattva. Maha, that means great, supreme. Bodhisattva. Bodhisattva, it's the sentient being who is striving, who's, uh, who is on his way to enlightenment who is practicing on his way to enlightenment, who has vowed to enlighten himself and enlighten all sentient beings, a bodhisattva. Of course, there's different levels of bodhisattva uh, practices. Uh, we are in the preliminary level. We vow to practice towards the path of enlightenment. We are also bodhisattva, but we are at the very preliminary level, the initial bodhisattva, the beginning bodhisattva. Zava, Zava, Mala, Mala. Zava, that means all, inclusive, everything. Zava. Zava, Zava, Mala, Mala. Mala. Mala means mental defilements or mental afflictions. Mala, which I always reiterate, is just not the same as Mala. Mala is your rosary beads. Your bouquet of flowers, that's mala, but there's mala, that is defilements, it's, it's mental defilement. In a, a dharani, in a mantra, every word means a lot. So that's the reason why we don't translate the meaning of the mantra, because it means so much. Um, even this word defilement, 
It means we have to strive towards eliminating our mental defilements, our mental afflictions. Um, do we have mental afflictions? Do we have mental defilements? Maybe many, many people don't even know about it. What are mental defilements? How many mental defilements that we have? Where do mental defilements belong to? Where do they come out? Where, where do the mental defilements arise? What's their source? They don't, don't you know about these mental defilements? Where do they come from? Do they come from people who infuriate you? Do they come from people who blame you? Do they come from outer environments, objects that induce you to be angry, induce you to be, to be jealous, induce you to be greedy? Do they come from outside? Well, all these external objects are only conditions and causes that help you to induce your own mental defilement. They come from you. It comes from within. It doesn't come from people. It doesn't come from you. Like, the object is neutral. The object itself is neutral. There's a diamond ring in the shop. Nobody noticed. I'm going to snatch at it and shoplift it and put it in my pocket. The diamond ring is neutral. The diamond ring is not criminal. It doesn't judge. Who judges it? Who creates the greediness? It's you. The mental defilement does not come from the diamond ring. It comes from you. It, from, it comes from your mental defilement. Now, where do these mental defilements come from? From the mind. It comes from the mind. So it comes from the mind. The Buddha said, we have to understand our minds. Minds with a plural form. Um, usually we use the mind with a singular form. One mind. Actually, there are eight minds in you. We call it the mind kings or the mind controller. The mind kings, the mind kings, eight mind kings in all of us. What are these eight mind kings? The eight mind kings in us. We have the, the five senses. Each one of them is a local king. What are, these, what are these senses that we have? The eye, the ear, the nose, the tongue, the body. These are the five senses physically that we have with God. So what, what, what does our eye interact with? Form, sight, material, eyes, see, uh, my, uh, my, our eyes see. So this is a, there is a senses in here. The mind is connected to this senses. So the eye, the ear, the nose, the tongue, to taste. So eye to form, ear to sound, nose to smell, tongue to taste. Body to touch, to touch. Do you have all these senses? If you do not have, then you're handicapped in some. If you cannot see, you're handicapped in sight. You cannot smell, you're handicapped in your nose. Given, assuming that we are not handicapped, you have all these five, we call it mind kings or consciousness. If we don't want to call it mind consciousness, the eye consciousness, the ear consciousness, the no consciousness, the tongue consciousness, the body consciousness. So we've got five. And what's the sixth consciousness called? The thinking consciousness. So all these five are the local kings. This loca all these five locali localities have to have another king that interact, interact with them. Or sometimes we use the example of five salesmen. 
You got all these five salesmen at the door. Everybody, everybody has these five salesmen right at the door, at the front end, interacting with all customers, interacting with all objects, sound, smell, taste, touch. All these five salesmen interacting. This consciousness is interacting, and then there is a thinking consciousness. In the Sanskrit language, is called mano consciousness. That. Is the controller for all these interacting with these? Now all these five senses, they don't judge and discriminate. They just perceive. They don't conceptualize. They don't. They don't contextualize. They don't speak. They don't have linguistic. So when they see a reverend, reverend being an op, what is a, what is a reverend? A reverend is, is. A person or thing uh, that you can pinpoint a linguistic expression for it. This is this is the floor, and that is a lantern. The lantern is a reference. You refer to that one. Lan- this reference, and you create a linguistic expression to express that as a lantern. The eye does not have that linguistic expression. The eye only perceive it. Someone has to give a linguistic expression for it, and that linguistic expression is not that simple. It digs into the past file. My mom told me this is red. My mom told me this is a lantern. It also digs into the file of the present. Instantly, almost instantly, so the judgment, the discerning abilities, and all that is by the thinking consciousness. Which is the sixth consciousness, that is the mano consciousness, and this mano consciousness is extremely sensitive. Now, where does that ego devotion resides in in your mind? There is another consciousness, which is a subtle and deeper consciousness than the thinking consciousness, than the mano consciousness, and that consciousness, the ego consciousness, in the Sanskrit language, is called the manas consciousness, M A N A S. If you like to get into the internet to research more into it, a lot of information in it. That's called the manas. That is the ego consciousness. Because all this thinking consciousness, there's got to be a, re- a region of the mind where not just the discrimination, the thinking, the discerning. There's also the I, quote and unquote I, you, I, me, they. You differentiate yourself from all the others. This is me, a self-centered me. This is my ego devotion. Everybody has that. The six, the prior six consciousnesses. I'm still talking within the boundary of the word defilement, but I need to explain to you. In order to, for you to understand that particular word, sometimes one word would take ninety days to explain, or it happened. Uh, there was a, a monk in in um, I don't I don't know which Tang, maybe in the Tang Dynasty, he used ninety days to explain a dharma. So, but we use ninety minutes would do, yeah, <laughs> not ninety days, yeah. So defilements. We're talking about okay, the prior six consciousnesses, and that is this region of the mind where you have this self-centeredness, deep rooted in there, which is very subtle, which you may not know. Most people don't know. They know that they have an I, they have an identity, they have an ego, but where does it, where is it residing in? How does it interact with all the others? You see, the eye consciousness, nose, ear, taste, tongue, and even the thinking consciousness will have interruptions. When I close my eyes, I don't have eye consciousness. I have interruptions. I shut off my ears. I don't have listening consciousness. I don't eat anything. I don't have tasting consciousness. So all these sense consciousness. Always have interruptions, intermissions, deliberately or undeliberately, consciously or unconsciously. 
And how about the thinking consciousness? Does it have interruption? What happens if you are in a coma? You passed out. What happens if we are sleeping? When you are sleeping, your thinking consciousness is interrupted. You may have a dream. You sometimes you may not have. So the 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 sixth conscious, the sixth and all these other five consciousness at the door. Even that controller. Uh, imagine this: five salesmen in a company interact with the customers. At the back, there's an office manager that control these five salesmen, and here's the, of course the thinking consciousness, and there's also the ego consciousness, right? Now all these have interruptions. Why? In this example, they could quit the job. The manager would quit tomorrow. All these salesmen, five salesmen, they could quit. But this ego consciousness, they don't have. It does not have interruptions. It carries on life after life. Your your ego, my ego, it accumulates life after life with no interruptions. It resides in the deepest subliminal level of the brain of the mind. You see, when you talk to scientists, they will always tell you the most inscrutable part of the human body is the brain, and they only could study about ten percent of what the brain functions. There's a lot of part in the brain that they don't even know, and is still being explored by the scientists as to what it means. The left brain, the right brain. So this. Ego, the mano, the manas consciousness is the seven consciousness, which is the ego consciousness, without interruption. It does not interrupt. It does not have interruptions. So it's, in a certain perspective, is unchanging. It always carry on. And then you say, okay, so. I have all these consciousnesses, so how come I can remember? How come? Where does all this information get stored? Information about myself, about my previous life. How, how about my experiences? Where do my experiences get stored? The salesmen don't care. They just interrupt the customers. The office manager only keeps track of what the salesman is doing, and makes sure that everything is running well in the office. So what are these archive stores? There's got to be archives in you, right? You don't have an archive. So where do it get, it get all stored? There's another consciousness, the store consciousness, which is called the a l i a consciousness. And that a l i a consciousness is extremely powerful. But that a l i a consciousness. It's neutral. It stores everything: wholesome things, unwholesome things, vicious things, compassionate things. It just received. It receives and gets stored in it, and it becomes what energy. It becomes energy, wholesome energy, unwholesome energy. Everything gets stored in there. Every word, every thought, all stores in there. How many megabytes are there? Uncountable, billions of megabytes. You cannot use it up. You've been you've been passing from one life after another with so many of these. In these are the seats inside the alaya consciousness. When conditions come, these seats would arise into manifest activities. So you have the seed of greediness in you. You get into a shop, you like that diamond ring. It induces you to steal that diamond ring. It interacts with with the outside world. There's a lot more to say. Other than this, eight mind kings. There are also ministers, fifty-one ministers, to help these mind kings to manifest activities, to store activities.